Hello dear friends, how are you? I am very sure that you are enjoying the online learning of various topics. Here we are learning the fundamental unit of life cell and we are learning various cell organelles. In the list of cell organelles, today we are going to learn some more important cell organelle, including the first one that we are going to learn is mitochondria. Yes, mitochondrion is a cell organelle specially present in eukaryotic cells only. It means it is absent in prokaryotic cell. It is ultra microscopic. It could be observed under electron microscope only. The number may be variable. They are more in physiologically active cells while they are less in physiologically less active cells. If you talk about their shapes, they are various shaped. Sometimes they are spherical, there are filamentous, there are donut shaped structures you can see here and therefore they are said to be polymorphic. If we talk about their structure, structurally each mitochondrion consisting outermost envelope which is two layered. The outermost layer is unit membrane, it is lipoproteinaceous, it is permeable membrane and it is smooth and continuous while the inner membrane as you can observe over here is folded you can see here from here to here it is a fold okay inner membrane it's running parallel here but it is undergoing forming a fold inside and because of these folds the inner compartment of the mitochondrion is somewhat divided right then this finger like projection in one view we can see otherwise you can see it is a complete fold this fold is called cristi what is it called cristi you can see number of cristi are there okay in fact the inner membrane is folded to form many cristi in order to increase the surface area because on this surface area the most important process that we call oxidative phosphorylation through which ATP synthesis that occurs and therefore to increase surface area for efficient ATP synthesis the inner membrane is folded to form Christi. Now on this Christi there are present very small ultra microscopy these types of structure they are called as F1 particles or they are called as oxisomes or they are called as elementary particles. They are consisting in fact the head region where ATP synthetase is present, the stroke region and the base region and in this base region what I am drawing just now which is present within the inner membrane. So this is base, this is stalk and this is head and this head is very important in order to synthesize ATP, adenosine triphosphate. It is a form of chemical energy that is generated within this molecule. This is mitochondria and therefore it is called as power of the cell. Inner to inner membrane as you can observe that this is a space that we called as inner space it is filled with matrix matrix is colorless colloidal cytosol or fluid that contain many substances in it lipids and certain proteins along with that it contain the cognizable material that we have to observe is 70 yes type of ribosome yes 70 yes type of ribosome as it would be remember that these types of ribosomes are present in prokaryotic cell so similar type of ribosomes are there in the mitochondrion similarly it also consisting the double stranded but circular dna molecule you can observe this is a circular dna molecule this very important feature of the mitochondria okay it is containing double stranded dna and ribosome with the help of this two material friends this mitochondria can synthesize its own proteins its own enzymes with the help of some material taken from the cytoplasm and therefore this mitochondrion is said to be semi-autonomous. Semi means half, autonomous means self. It synthesizes its own material okay, with the help of some material present in the cytoplasm. It is also called as self-duplicating means from one mitochondria to four many mitochondria can produce especially during the process of cell division this process you can observe. Okay. Mitochondria is specially involved in the chemical synthesis, chemical 
energy synthesis and you can see this is the line sketch that you have to draw the diagram when you write in examination okay what are the functions mitochondria is known as power of the cell because in mitochondria most of the atp it generated if you remember we have studied the process of aerobic respiration and what we have learned from one glucose molecule about 38 atp molecules are being produced out of this 38 atp produced from one glucose molecule in a cell 36 atp are generated within this mitochondria and therefore the energy currency called atp is synthesized by mitochondria it is called as power house of the cell okay beside that mitochondria is also involved in synthesis of myoglobin and it is also helping various phenomena okay so this is one of the most important cell organelle associated with the eukaryotic cell it is absent in prokaryotic cell and it is related with chemical energy synthesis and therefore it is called as power house of the cell <coughs> uh, as in the beginning i told you that is very ultra microscopic now one more important cell organelle today we are going to learn is plastids actually plastid is a word indicates any bag like structure okay which is a bag like structure and that bag like structure is having outer envelope and within that envelope present some material that we call plastid there are various types of plastid as you can see in this slide uh, they are chromoplast they are leucoplast leuco means colorless leucoplast are the plastid that are containing outermost double layered unit membrane but these are the cell organelle associated with the storage of the material like starch oil protein some granules and so according they are also called as amyloplast okay lipoplast but in common they are called as leucoplast why leuco they are colorless then chromoplast chromo means containing colorful pigments these chromo chromoplast are you can as you can understand that containing various types of pigment and therefore they are called as chloroplast if they are containing more amount of green color pigments then they are called as chloroplast in this syllabus we are going to learn the structure of chloroplast but basically you have to understand that the plastids are the membranous structures containing some materials within them leucoplast and chromoplast these are the two main types now we are going to learn chloroplast as you can see in this diagram over here friends can you observe this diagram yes this is the outermost membrane each chloroplast consisting double layered outermost membrane here are certain diagrams before that you can also see that various types of plastids are being also seen the proplastid it develops into sometime leucoplast and leucoplast if they are containing starch they are called amyloplast if they are containing protein they are called as proteinoplast if they are containing lipids they are called as elioplast this proplastid then develops into etioplast and if that etioplast containing green color pigment it is called chloroplast and when it is containing various types of pigments other than green then it is called as chromoplast we are dealing particularly with this chloroplast as you can see here also this three dimensional diagram and each chloroplast is consisting of outermost double layer unit membrane it is called as peristomium peristomium this peristomium plays important role in protection and exchange of material in and out inside this peristomium is present a colorless matrix that we called as stroma okay this colorless matrix is called as stroma here you can see this is stroma and in this stroma are present enzymes for direct reaction of the photosynthesis beside that this also consisting some ribosomes particularly uh, 70s type of ribosomes as you can see here 70s type of ribosome here also present and in the chloroplast is present double stranded circular dna like chloroplast uh, sorry like mitochondria it is also consisting its own but circular dna 70s type of ribosome and therefore chloroplast can also synthesize its own protein chloroplast can also get duplicated and therefore chloroplast is also a self duplicating and semi autonomous type of cell organelle uh, beside that 
other structures include very important you can see within this stro stroma okay the colorless fluid are suspended the green color structures which looks like stack of coins mano coins ek dusre ke upar rakhe hain these stack of coins are called granum single is granum many are grana about 20 to 28 grana are present in one chloroplast now how each granum is produced each granum is produced by as i'm just going to draw here a diagram by a single laminated disc like here i can show here it is a disc okay disc like structure which i have shown this cross section this structure is called as thylakoid okay then this this is another thylakoid which is arranged on the earlier one then there is another thylakoid okay you can see here this is thylakoid and this space within this thylakoid is called as grana compartment where are present many pigments arranged in a groups called quanta soup so pigments are present within this thylakoid okay and you can see this is a membrane which is connecting this grana with this and with this grana with this these are called as intergrana lamellae okay or they are called fret channels here you can see in this two dimensional diagram from here to here from here to here all these grana are internally connected by this fret channel or intergrana lamellae and because of that transport of material within that is possible and furthermore these are connected to this membranes or outermost peristomium and therefore a kind of internal connectivity or internal tubular connection is there present within this cell organ okay now granum as it containing many you can see here these are the pigments in the form of their groups these are the pigments granum is associated with the trapping of the light water oxidation that we call photolysis of water that mean light reaction of the photosynthesis so light reaction of the photosynthesis occurs in granum while dark reaction that we call synthesis of glucose that occurs in stroma of the chloroplast okay so this is the structure of the chloroplast in the next slide also i am going to explain you uh, as you can see here what i explained you uh, this is the structure of chloroplast okay uh, once again i'll repeat outermost double layered membrane called peristomium inside the peristomium is present colorless colloidal matrix called stroma in the stroma are present enzymes for dark reaction ribosome 70s type double stranded dna molecule and green color structures called grana each granum is made up of about 10 to 15 thylakoid each thylakoid is a sac like structure within that sac like structure of thylakoid are present many pigments so pigments are present within this granum which trap the light for photosynthesis and therefore light reaction of the mechanism of photosynthesis occurs in granum and dark reaction occurs in uh, stroma of the chloroplast okay so this is all about chloroplast you have to remember it it's very important cell organelle now uh, present in eukaryotic photosynthetic cell important aspect to remember is that cyanobacteria are prokaryotic they are photosynthetic but because they are photosynthetic in them chloroplasts are not present chloroplasts are absent in photosynthetic prokaryotic cells like cyanobacteria there are certain bacteria you know they are performing photosynthesis in them also chloroplasts are not present that's important notice you have to do it okay then let me go for one more important cell organelle most of the time it is not even studied as a cell organelle but it is very important cell organelle called vacuole uh vacuole is specially present in plant cell okay what is vacuole it is actually the space or vesicle within the cytoplasm of the cell but the most important is that it is enclosed by a semi permeable membrane called tonoplast this membrane is called tonoplast as it is a unit membrane it is a semi permeable membrane it is a characteristic and therefore allows certain metals to go in and out okay so within this membrane there are present many uh, sorry here you can see this is a cell and this is the vacuole and in this vacuole i i could show here this is the membrane okay tonoplast and within this tonoplast are present certain substances enclosed within it this is the uh, cell wall of the cell and this is the cytoplasm as you can see 
and within that cell in the center you can observe a space or vesicle surrounded by the membrane that we call tonoplast it is called as vacuole one more important aspect regarding vacuole you have to understand is that vacuoles are usually present in the plant cells the vacuoles in the plant cells are bigger they are central and they occupying the major portion and pressing this cytoplasm against the cell wall tightly and because of that a turgidity of the cell is possible vacuole are the storage sacs for solid or liquid content certain minerals certain storage substances a uh, star sometime glucose sometime flavonoids and alkaloids and these types of substances are also being stored in this vacuole they are small size in animal cell as i told you but in plant cell they are very larger the central vacuole of the some plant cell may occupy about 50 to 90% of the cell volume that's what you can understand in plant cell vacuoles are full of cell sap and provide turgidity and rigidity to the cell try to understand the turgidity to the condition we call fully solen condition and because of that fully solen condition the plant organs like birds and leaves and the branches they remain erect and because of they remain erect they can trap more and more sunlight if the vacuole is small if the vacuole loses water and it the, the plant part become the placid and this is the uh, most important role that vacuoles are performing in the plant cell many substances of importance to the plants and to the life they are stored in the vacuoles as i told you uh, certain organic substances like proteins there are certain substances like alkaloid flavonoid starch pigments they are all stored in this vacuole now in single cell organism like amoeba okay the food vacuole contain food items that the amoeba has consumed so that is also called as vacuole while in case of some organisms like uh, what we call paramecium Uh, the vacuoles they are also called as contractile vacuole they are used to expel the excess of water so they are used as excretory organs okay sometimes they are also excreting out the waste it's very really interesting the contractile vacuole in the organism like paramecium they helping in expelling excess amount of water as well as waste and that's what we have to understand so with this three cell organelle we have studied i conclude today with the, for this particular chapter dear friends what we have learned in this chapter through various videos you please observe again and again and study again and again for your every doubt i am here what we learn that each cell acquires its structure and ability to function because of the organization of its membrane and organelle present in the specific ways the cell thus a basic structural organization this helps the cells to perform functions like respiration obtaining nutrition clearing of the waste material or forming the new proteins so what we say the different life processes and different life um, functions or different types of functions being performed by the proteins are actually the functions being performed at the cell level within the cell there is a perfect process that we called as division of labor every function is distributed to different types of cell organelle so there is a compartmentation of function different types of functions are being performed by different types of cell organelle within the cell so cell is its its own way is a perfect structural and functional unit that can undergo duplication that can produce its own material and that it can survive independently and therefore understanding the cell structure is understanding the beginning of the biology okay so this is uh, what we call as a the summary of this particular chapter i request you to please read go on solving the questions and ask me the difficulties on this particular channel dr sunil modak's bio dna if you like this videos so you please click the like button subscribe this channel so that uh, when i'm going to prepare the new chapter for you especially based on ncert syllabus exactly not going here and there understanding your class and your difficulty level scope and limitation of the ncert syllabus of the standard 9 i am preparing this videos particularly during this vacation period in the verge of covid 19 with this i conclude i pay my sincere thanks for watching this video thank you very much good day goodbye we'll meet for the next chapter thank you till then bye